Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the real Charlemagne. Brick City is the show. I'm happy to have you here on this Saturday. You know, you could be other places, but you're here with me, listening and and partaking in, in this good this, this good word you're about to get today. Hey, um, today's show I got a title for. It's gonna call Light at the End of the Tunnel. Um guest today, you'll understand that as, as the show progresses. Um, first off, I want to give a shout out to my granddaughter, Layla. Her birthday was last weekend. She hit the big one. Time flew by quick. Uh, my my brother's birthday was was last week as well. He's uh he he was uh down in, in North Carolina. Uh, Carlos, good good uh, having you back in the state. Um, my daughter, youngest daughter, her birthday is next week, the nineteenth. So. Shout out to you and happy anniversary to you. <laughs> you and um, Fred over there, Fred taking care of the family. Um, and everybody else that uh, I, I miss, happy birthday to you, July. Cancer babies, you know, I, I'll be glad when this cancer season over because y'all killing me because it's a lot of y'all. <laughs> yeah, and my sister's birthday is actually this week. So happy birthday, Erica. But I don't want to leave nobody out. All right, today, light at the end of the tunnel. This brother right here, I met him a couple of weeks ago. Um, no, probably about a month ago now at a, at a uh, function, you know, for uh, us black men in our community coming together to try to do something positive to help our young, young uh, fellas in our community. Um, just to give them a little positive lights to see. And um, like I said, ever since then we've been connected and, um, you know, this brother, he has a story. He's an author, community leader. And without further ado, we got Mr. Derek Clark, a.k.a. Doc. How you doing, brother? Tell us a little bit about yourself. What's good, my brother? What's good? Hey, hey, man. Hey, I'm Derek Clark. Man. I'm from Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, I'm almost a half a century, man. 49 years old, man. So I've <laughs> been, been, been through life, man, a few, you know, a few times, man. Uh, Derek right. Clark, but man, uh, from the west side, from the south side, I'm born and raised on the south side of Greenville, Kearney Park Projects, man. And uh, mm -hmm. at some point, mom moved on the west side of Greenville, man, where I was up and reared up, man, over that way. Gotcha. Uh, yep, 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 man. I, you know, if you want to talk about the prison bid, man, after high school, man, I'm a, I'm a former MVP baseball player, man, for G.H. Rose High School. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. How high, how high, Rose High. I'm a former former MVP for post 39 American Legion baseball, man. I'm a former, I'm a former dropout of college because after, 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 after baseball, after high school, I ended up going to college on a scholarship, man. But nevertheless, because I wasn't prepared, I, 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 uh, I quit, man. Right. I quit, well, quit and went straight to the streets, man. And then ended up in prison, man. And, wow. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's, you know, that's, you know, that's a, that's a path. Unfortunately, uh, some people, you know, they take that path. You know, I, I went to college too, man. It wasn't for me, um, but I went to the army. <laughs> I went, I went to the other game. You know, it wasn't a street game. That's, look, that's a national game, but <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But, um, but yeah, man. Um, you know, tell us a little bit. You know, about that 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 prison situation. You know, and how you instead of letting it be a damper, you, you, you turned it around and came out bettering yourself and try to better this community. I, I, I actually, it just, it just dawned on me, man. Uh, you know, I, I had, I had never been in trouble before I got to prison. You know what I mean? Before I got locked up in 1998 with me and my, with me and my crew, formerly known as the, as the players in Greenville, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? People, man, that they kind of, you know, what I mean, went to the feds on us, and 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 you know, they told a, a mustard seed of truth, but uh, you know, what I mean, a swamp full of lies. Right. And that's that's how we ended up in, in prison, man. Ended up uh, doing a a twenty year bid through a conspiracy. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. conspiracy, crack cocaine, and 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 you know, some gun charge and stuff like that, man. Right. But as far as going into prison, man, it, it really didn't take long, man. I. I am a minister, man. I received the Lord Jesus Christ as my as my Lord and Savior, man. And then it, it was it was like automatically, man. Right. You know what I mean? I'll tell you right. another story. 
before before I even got to prison, man. It was like 1993 when I was on 14th Avenue, man, selling drugs, man, amongst uh amongst a lot of people that were selling drugs. And at this time, this street, man, was kind of it was the busiest street in in, in Greenville, man. It right, was the busiest. Right, right. And and this guy used to come through, man. He would talk. He would, he would always call me out of the pack. And he right. said, "Boy, you gonna." He said, boy, you're going to be a preacher one day. <laughs> See, that kind of started in 1993, but, uh, mm -hmm. but he didn't recall me until I got, until I got locked up. Right. And, and, and then once that thing, once that thing started recalling me, man, I, I kind of accepted where I was, man. And, and I just took that opportunity to, to realize that, Hey, this is, this is, this is, this is how I'm going to turn my life around, man. I'm going right, to use right, this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I mean, we appreciate you, brother. Um, like I said, just you know, it, it you know, people in this area, man, it's like a lot of people say, well, Greenville small, Pitt County small, but it's like it's big enough that we don't have any inter interaction with a lot of people. You know what I mean? Because everybody kind of stay to their own, you know, crew and stay in their own parts of town. So okay. you know, I'm I'm from the small town of Aiden. You know, man, and like I said, I just met you. Couple, you know, about a month ago, you know what I mean? But just that, you know, just understand that sincerity about the path you came, man, it, it touched me because I said I could have been there easily, took the same route, and I could have been in the same situation as you. <clears throat> right. And um, I don't take that for granted by any means. Um, right. Because it's like a lot of a lot of partners of mine, friends of mine that got grown up with, you know, either they incarcerated, or they they got the long bid, which is in the grave, yeah. you know what I mean? and and that's the long bid, um, and that's the bid ain't come ain't no coming back from. But it's yeah. like you know you you took that and made it a positive light. Um, with that being said, I know you got a book and um, some of the things. So tell people how to follow you real quick, you know, before we so before we get into the book and how you got to the book. Okay, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on social media, man. I'm 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 young in the social media game, but I'm on. I'm on <laughs> yeah, I'm on. I'm on Facebook as as Derek Clark as my government name, Derek Clark. Uh, okay. I'm on Instagram as Pure Grace Zero Four. Okay. Pure Grace Pure Grace Zero Four on Instagram and Derek Clark on Facebook. Okay. Okay. And um, also. With a pure grace, spell that for the for the spell it for the uh, listeners today, so they can make sure they get it right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Pure grace, uh, P U R E, grace, G R A C E, zero four. Gotcha. Zero four. Zero appreciate, four. I use I, I use that I use that four because that that was my baseball number in school. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So uh, the pure grace. I, I see you got t-shirts. You got hats. Yeah. Tell, us little, tell us a little bit about the book without giving away everything about it. <laughs> okay, okay. As far as the book, as far as the book, the book is a it's a chronological, it's a chronological. I, I guess I say a treaty treaties, man, about about my life. I I I, uh, I actually wrote a lot of the book while I was in prison, so I had a mm -hmm. manuscript kind of when I came home. Right. But uh. But I knew I needed to add some of what I had uh, started doing once I got outside of prison, gotcha. and so it started. It started one, one day, man. I woke up in my mother's house, man, and uh, wasn't feeling one wasn't feeling quite myself, man. Uh, I was feeling kind of down, man, about where I was in the journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what I did was I got in a, got in my car, man. I drove over to Kearney Park, man, to where I used to live at. Okay. All right? Well, then I took, uh, you know, I stopped by the store, got some writing paper, uh, got me something to eat, man, because I knew I was going to sit there for a while. Okay. And I actually started writing this particular book, my journey. I actually started writing that book on the side of that project house that I grew up in. Wow. And so it talks about, so it talks about my, uh, it talks about my life, my upbringing, uh -huh. uh, talks about, you know, those years in Kernan Park projects when I, you know, running around in those projects and then moving over to the west side of town and then. You know how how my mom and I, man, we kept we kept moving from from one neighborhood to another neighborhood, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So, and then it talks about it talks about what happened, uh, how I got to prison, and then what happened in prison. It talks about what happened just a little bit after I got out of prison. So, okay, okay. So it's um, my journey through my transitions to my transformation to my uh, for my testimony. You know what right. I mean? I just wanted people to know my story, man, and I actually I actually wanted to know. How did I end up in that situation? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. That was the most important part. How did I end up in that situation? You know what I mean? So that, that, that was- You know what? That's, that's huge right there, bro. You know what? It, because a lot of us, you know, we don't understand the process. How do right. how we get to certain situations? You know what I mean? Um, you know, every, every, and that's what I tell everybody. Everybody comes to my show, everybody I speak to in life, everybody has a story. Right. Everybody's story is not going to be the same. Everybody's story is not going to have the same ending, but everybody has a story. You that's know right. what I mean? And, and like I said, understanding you and understanding where you come from and how you got to certain places, that's huge because a lot of people don't want to grasp those hard those hard things in life and, and and say, hey, this is where I messed up at. This is where I took the wrong turn. Or if I had to did this, you know what I'm saying? Because then, like you said, by you chronicalizing it, it get it gives another person that may be about to hit to that step, they see where you was at. And they're like, oh hold on. He was right here. So instead of taking this turn that he took, let me take the other turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> So right. man, that's that's like I said, that's just a blessing that you that's right. able to put that together. Yeah. Um, so I know, yeah, look, we was, you know, we was talking about your little exercise regiment and how you got some people involved in the community. Talk us a little bit of how that came about and what transpired from you doing that. How did that <laughs> link you up to where you are now? Hey, wait, well, we're, being a former athlete, man, uh, I had to keep it going, man. Uh, I actually was doing a lot of training while I was in prison, right? Okay. I was, uh, uh, of course, I, I said I was a minister. I was an inmate pastor, and I also was, I guess, I, I guess you can say, quote unquote, uh, personal trainer in prison. You know what I mean? I was okay. commissioned. I was commissioned, so I ran the recreation while I was oh. in prison. I okay. just decided and just to go for it as far as exercising, man. Uh, I, I think I got it from one guy, man, guy out of Philly, man. I, I, I seen him going to the track one day. Mm -hmm. and Said, man, he said, I'm about to run until my heart but burst. Mm. Said, I'm about to run until my heart burst. At, at that time, I think he had uh, maybe close to a life sentence. I think he had a life sentence, and he was working on some appeals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But what he was saying was, what he was saying in essence is that if he was going to die in prison, it would, it, it would be because he was working hard for himself. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't let them kill him. You know what yeah. I mean? So I took, mm -hmm. on, I took on that mentality, man, to make sure that, you know, when I, I'm, I'm going to survive in prison, you know, I'm right. going to do my right. part. And so I started training, training as well, man, holding class and stuff like that, man. And I figured that, you know, I'm going to bring that home too, man. You know, if it helped okay. me survive in prison, it helped me survive out in life, man. So that's what that's about, man. Um, uh, recently, I just became a, 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 a certified personal trainer. So, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, my first act of service, man, was to give it to the community, man. And we just started we just started holding conditioning classes over at uh, uh, Thomas Foreman Park, a.k.a. West Greenwood Gym, man. I brought it back to where I'm from, you know what okay. I mean? Uh, and, and at, the baseball, at the baseball league over there, Jackie Robinson Baseball League. And I just want those guys, man, to, uh, you know, to get it. Right. And, sometimes, and sometimes it starts with uh, conditioning. Right, and right, so right. That's, that's what that's what that's all about, and that's where Rock with Doc come from, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's where Rock with Doc come from, man. And look, I, man, I you know, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how conditioning affects your mind as well. You know, it, and it, you know, just the chemical, it, it has so many different functions just by working out. It releases so many different chemicals into your body, and just, you know, yeah. and then some of those kids that have aggression, and some adults. Just exercising, you know, yeah. like one of my kids, <laughs> hey, that joke used to go in school, cut up. I used to get him up at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Take him out in the country, make him run yeah. up and down the dirt path. You know what I'm saying? Look, I, I could tell it now because he has he grown now. But <laughs> look, look, yeah, look, yeah. look, so the people wouldn't come get me. But I, he I used to make him run up and down the dirt path. You know, he I had a little log out there. He he would take it from one end of the path to the other end. I'm like, you ain't cutting up today, buddy. Cause he was too tired, but like I said, <laughs> but yeah. the thing about it, it got his, it got him stimulated to relax his mind and relax his body to think about what he, his thing was when there was a listen to that teacher for that moment. And yes, uh, I'm glad you're bringing it back. A lot of things back, man. And it's a, uh, it's awesome. That Jackie Robinson league, man, that's, that thing is huge. Now my son yeah. actually played over there. He played with Toma years ago. Okay. And, um, okay. That, that, that's awesome that you got that. That's awesome league over there. 
And um, you coach, you know, you a commissioner. I know you, I saw you in the umpire uniform one day. Yeah. <laughs> you do a little bit of yeah. everything, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I actually started coaching. I actually started coaching over there. Uh, okay. And, uh, you know, still still, still kind of transitioning through through the city, man, and trying to figure out, you know, wh where am I, you know what I mean? And then and sometimes the job don't coincide with uh, the time that they're trained, that, that, I mean, that they're playing right now. So I right, couldn't right. take on. I couldn't take on the coaching aspect of it this year, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, so what I wanted to add was training and conditioning, you know what gotcha. I mean? Okay. That way, I, I'm not I'm not uh, just coaching one team. Uh, I'm coaching. I'm coaching. I'm training the whole league. That right. that's that's the mission for right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. Them kids, they definitely need it. And uh, we we appreciate you as a community, man. We definitely appreciate you giving back. Um, Cause that's much needed, much needed. And you know, you don't realize just your presence alone. That's huge because they don't see us in the positive light. You know, all they see is, you know, sometimes they see the guys with the big rims and stuff like that. That's the, they focal point. But then when somebody take up time with them and then they yep. start to get to know you, they're like, I want to yep. be like this guy instead of that guy. You know what I mean? Because this guy, he, 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 he cares for me. He trying to, he trying to look out for me. Y'all, um, y'all got a, a, a what is it? A, a banquet coming up, right? It is uh, the end of end of end of year ceremony. That's uh, forget the date what it, uh, what the date is, but it's, it's going to be at uh, Guy Smith Stadium. It's going to be at Guy Smith Stadium with uh, you know, where we play baseball at over there, man. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. But thinking back off something you said about. How the kids, uh, the kids will be looking at other players and stuff like that. One of the things, man, not only do I want to add uh, quality condition, mm -hmm. uh, but I also say I want to, I want to add quality attention. Gotcha. You know, what I mean? quality mm -hmm. attention. This is this is sacrificial time that we're, that we're giving uh, these kids, man. So we want them to understand, man. Not only again, not only are we giving them quality condition, and we're giving them quality attention. You know right. what I mean? Because after we train. We sit down and we give them a word. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Word. Man, that's that. Like I said, that's definitely you know like that's that's above and beyond. Um, I used to coach, man, and it's like, you know, peer, you know, people sit up in the stands. They, them stand coaches and all that stuff. They, you know, they get up there and they yapping, and it's like, y'all don't understand what it takes to deal yep. with these kids. <laughs> Look, bless you. Got to deal with these kids. You don't know what they, know what's going on with them at the house. Yeah, and then you you gotta, you know, you gotta you gotta deal with that. Try to figure out how to connect with them. And that's why I said, with as being a coach and, and being someone in the community, you got to learn how to connect with each individual kid that you're dealing with, because all of them don't listen and comprehend the same way. That's right. And um, that that's what a lot of people don't understand. They look, like, they easy to, to criticize from the sideline until right. they get the mix, and they're like, "What yeah. word?" <laughs> that's, crazy. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. man. So, uh, occupation wise, you know, you don't have to tell you place of employment, but what do you do occupation wise now? You know, to keep you, you know, like you said, you you keep you you keep busy on so many different levels. So, what do you do occupation wise? You know, look, I know you got to make some money somehow. <laughs> yes, sir. Got to, got to make some. Hey, hey, man, hey, you got to, you got to survive out here, man. You got to have some money. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's been a transition to, for jobs too. When I first came home, I was, uh, I was working with Lori Tight, Lori Savage, man, at a uh, starting point where we work with uh, mental health and substance abuse individuals. Okay. You know what I mean? So that was the first job that I that I had when I came home, and okay. then I started. At Paradigm Incorporated, we work with IDD, man, uh, intellectual uh, development disorder mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. handicap people like that, man. And then I took a hiatus and went to Connecticut. Went okay. to Connecticut. Then I came back from Connecticut. I started working with uh, D's Affordable Movement Service. And uh, while I was working with D's Affordable Movement Service, man, uh, I got a phone call from someone from uh, Jackie Robinson Baseball League. And they said, uh, they said that, uh, the gym got a West Virginia gym, got a job there. And they said, show up, show up at the job fair. They already know your background. Okay. And that job, that job fair was for a uh, uh, Vida Medical Center. Vida wow. Medical. So I've been working at Vida Medical Center since uh, since September. 
Okay. I started out as a community health advocate, uh, going out in the community, trying to get people to, uh, to participate in survey for COVID-19. Okay. Uh, and once that program ended, they uh, transferred me over to the actual COVID site uh, where I work at right now, man. So, okay. Okay. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm yeah. working at right now. Man, that's good, man. Look, you help the community all the way around, brother. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's huge, man. Um, I know that, you know, that COVID put a damper on a lot of a lot of things last year. And I'm glad we kind of getting a handle on it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And kind of a little, little, look, a little normalcy, a little normalcy. But uh, yeah. I know I know we still got a ways to go with that. Um, one more time, uh, drop uh, drop your web, I mean, not your website, but your your IG and your Facebook. Facebook, Derek Clark, Derek Clark on Facebook, on Instagram. You can, you can look me up as Pure Grace, P-U-R-E, Grace, G-R-A-C-E, zero four. And tell them how to find that book on uh, Amazon or where else can you find that? Book, man, the book is on, it's on Amazon. The book is okay. on Amazon. All you got to do is look up, look up my name and look up the title, my journey, my transitions to my transformation for my testimony. Okay, and okay. It, Pull right up, man. It's on Amazon, or you can get in contact with me through Facebook, uh, through uh, through the information that I've, I've, I've already given you, right? Okay. And we, you, we can meet me somewhere, and I can I can give it to you. <laughs> Got you. All right. And I knew I know you said you had something special to, to announce today. What what you got? What you got special for one listener out there that that, that reach out to you and say they mentioned Brick City. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You missed you mentioned in Brick City, man. You mentioned Brick City. Say, you're sitting down, you're talking to uh, uh, the real Charlemagne. Look, I'm going to give you one of these books. Okay. I'm going to give you one of these books because I know this book going to touch your life. And not only am I going to give you a book, I'm going to give you one of these I'm gonna give you one of these shirts right here. Okay, okay. I'm going to give you one of these pure, pure great shirts right here. Gotcha, right? gotcha. All right, all right. <laughs> get, in, get in contact with me. Get in contact with me or get in contact with, with, with the real Charlemagne and we're going to make it happen. I know that's right. I know that's right. Man, this look, this has been an awesome show, but look, we 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 getting close on time, bro. But I know you got a lot of nuggets, man. So this this is this is the rule of my show, man. You gotta you gotta drop nugget for the people before you go. I'm gonna drop a nugget, man. Uh, you, you you call this the the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. It was um, initially I got a 30 year sentence. You know, my whole crew is six of us. So we reigned from uh, 20, 24 to 20, 24 years to a life sentence. Okay. All of us, all of us came, you know, we came back, we won on an appeal. You know what gotcha. I mean? Mm -hmm. We won on an appeal. So somewhere through that transition, man, I discovered, man, that divine purposes are fulfilled in everyday, in everyday experiences. Divine right. purposes are fulfilled in everyday experiences. So in life, man, when you're going through life, there's always going to be some, there's always going to be some traumatic experiences. There's always going to be some trials in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but through the grace of God, through the pure grace of God, man, if we could just hold on while we're going through those experiences, we'll realize that we can come out of whatever we're going through. And mm -hmm. that's what happened with my life. That's what happened with my life. I, I, I vowed, man, that when I came home, I was not going to come home and try to prove nobody wrong. Right. At the end with that was, I'm gonna come home and I'm gonna prove God right about me. Right. Prove God <laughs> right. right. And then the other thing is that as far as, cause I know I had to come back out here and see people that, that really got on that stand. Right. right. Mm -hmm. so I vowed with myself that I wasn't gonna be bitter because I was already better. Right. Mm. Verse in the Bible, verses in the Bible were children of Israel, especially when, when Joseph was in, uh, he was in uh he was in prison, mm -hmm. right? And his brothers finally met up with him and he told him, he told him, look, he said, he said, Y'all meant this for evil, mm -hmm. but God meant this for good, so yeah. that I can come and save much people. Wow. That's 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 the story, man. That is that is the mandate for me, man, to use whatever I got to save much people. Hey, you said a mouthful right there, brother. Mm -hmm. My fool. And like I said, you didn't come back with that, that bit in strife. You said you just told those people, God bless you. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody, like everybody ain't for you. You know, everybody That's looking at your downfall. They I know they're looking at you with a under a microscope right now. They're waiting for you to, to, to just 
not cross a T, you know what I'm saying? Because they want you to fall. But that's it. You, you're you not giving them that opportunity, and man. Yes, like you said, that's just pure grace. <laughs> pure grace, man. Hey, I ain't had nothing to do with it, man. It's all God, man. It's yeah, pure yeah, pure yeah. Grace. All right, like, yeah. But yeah, man. Yeah, one, right. one, one, one shout out, though. I got, I got, I got, I got to get my list out there. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. We got about two minutes left. Go ahead. Hey, especially, man, to the city of Greenville, man. The city of Greenville really opened up their arms, man, and you know what I mean, and welcome me back. I knew the west side of town was gonna, gonna welcome me back, but the other side of town welcomed me back too, man. And, uh, you know, uh, shout out to Jackie Robinson Baseball League for, for allowing me to come in and use my gift. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, shout out to Jermaine McNabb, man, for allowing me, man, to come sit on his board, man, NC Silver, man. So I'm kind of working over there with them, man. Uh, right. I'm on the, I'm on the commissioner. I'm a, I'm a, rec, I'm a recreation commissioner, man, for the Green, uh, city of Greenville, North Carolina. That's you know, big. I appreciate I appreciate that opportunity. I'm also on the advisory board for the swimming pool that they're putting over at West Green Gym. Okay. Right. And as of late, as of late, as of late, man, I've been I've been offered the opportunity to be on the executive committee for a for a reentry program. Awesome. You know, so so I get a chance, man. All of, all of my experiences, man, I get a chance, man, to to offer it, man, to the community of Greenville, man. So big hey. shout out to Greenville. That's that's a blessing, man. Look, that's what we're here for, man. This, this is what I I, I I got brought into this platform for people, for things like this. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's not going to be on the local news stations and everybody's not going to be on the national CNN and all these other news. So that's where I come in. You know what I'm saying? I reached out to you. You didn't hesitate. You, you look, you only think you took a breath. <laughs> you like, Before I get no, no. like, yeah. Look, I, I'm been waiting. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look! You, I look. You say I took too long, huh? But look, Whoa. <laughs> oh man! Hey, but brother, I I appreciate this conversation, man. This has been yes, this has been in depth, and um, I know the people is really going to enjoy this, and um, you know, just, people just definitely um reach out to this brother. He, hey, he just he's just encouraging, man. He just like I said, as soon as I met him, you can meet a genuine person and just see. Just look at his brother's eyes, tell how passionate he is about helping people, helping human beings. You know what I'm saying? You know, sometimes, it's, you know, some people get caught up in, I only gonna help this. He wanted his help people. That's that's, that's, right. that's what his main focus is. <laughs> that's it. You know, um, but yeah, man. Um, like I said, I'm about to sign off of here, man. And um, like I said, thank you again. Hey, continue to be a blessing, brother. And, yes, sir. Um, People out there, hey, don't forget to follow me on my platforms, Facebook, Instagram, IG, TikTok, Clubhouse, everything. Look, The Real Charlemagne. Also on Facebook, follow my fan page, Brick City. I might have some giveaways coming up, so you might want to stay tuned to that fan page. But until next Saturday, talk to you guys soon. Peace. <laughs>